Well, good afternoon, everybody. I figured I'd shoot some video of this, and I realize a lot of you are here because I've got all kinds of machining stuff happening. If this doesn't interest you, then by all means, click on past. This channel is mostly me rambling on about the weird stuff I'm getting into on any given day. So, anyways, I have been hunting around looking at different ideas for a chase vehicle for the Wander Lodge. So, in two weeks, Wiggles and I are going down to uh, Georgia and picking up the 79 FC35 uh, that we bought from our friend Frank down there. So we're really excited, but I've been thinking about, we need a tow along vehicle as our chase vehicle for when we're out traveling. And I'd been looking at compact cars and all kinds of crazy ideas. And then one day I just got smacked by this epiphany. Now, full disclosure, I gotta tell you, I've spent most of my life mocking Jeep owners because they're all so clicky and cultish and like our vehicles are the best things that ever invented and all of that kind of stuff. But what struck me was I needed something that was light. I needed something that was flat towable. Now, originally I was gonna trailer it and then all of a sudden I realized one day, where the heck do I think I'm gonna go with the trailer when I'm sitting in a campground? Like they don't give you a spot to park your trailer most of the time. So anyways, in the process thing a lot over, I realized a Jeep Wrangler really was the answer. So anyhow, I started poking around and wasn't very serious about it because I was seeing, I was mostly looking at uh, TJs the what, 97 to 2000, whatever they are, I'm not a Jeep expert, was looking at TJs primarily because everybody said, oh, they're so much better. I didn't care as much about that. Like, honestly, you probably already tell this is a YJ. It's got the leaf spring front end. I like leaf spring front ends. They're simple. I don't care that they ride crappy. I don't care that they off-road crappy. I love the simplicity and the durability of them. Um, anyways, I owned second generation Dodge Cummins trucks for a while and developed a deep hatred for four link front suspension with factory induced death wobble. But anyways, that's a whole nother story. So long and short of it was, I was mostly looking at TJs for the reason that they run OBD2 electronics and I don't care much for OBD1. It's a nightmare to troubleshoot when you have problems. But so I had seen this Jeep for sale early on and, uh, it was listed at a reasonable price and it looked pretty good, but it didn't take me long to figure out that they always look better in the pictures than they do in real life. So I went ahead and bookmarked it, but did not pay any more attention than that to it. Well, then two weeks later, Facebook pops up and says he's dropped the price 600 bucks. And then I thought, you know, I really like this suspension better. I could deal with OBD1. I ought to go look at it. Now, I did so without a lot of hope for it being amazing because I'd already been finding out what I already knew that Jeeps rust into a pile of iron oxide in rapid order in Michigan with road salt. But I set up to go look at it. I got up there and I climbed around and I'm telling you, this may be the cleanest, closest to bone stock YJ left in the state of Michigan. Like it's crazy. First off, when do you ever see one that some kid hasn't lifted and jacked up and screwed with? And I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, like, seriously, when's the last time you saw a bone stock YJ? This is a 94. And then check this out. Surface rust, driver's floorboard surface rust, but absolutely not a hole in this thing. Check this out. I mean, this is what most of the Jeep looks like. Like, look at that. Like, the bottom of this Jeep looks like that. The frame pretty much looks like that. It's crazy. Like, check this out. Like, when is the last time you saw a YJ, or for that matter, a TJ in Michigan, that the bottom of it, you can see, like, surface rust, paint's flaking, no holes, no rotted out. It's crazy. This thing is so solid. <clears throat> I'll show you the worst rust on the body. Right there. Got a rust hole through where it trapped something from the inside. But anyways, it's a 2.5 liter stick shift, like 236,000 miles on it. Runs like a million bucks. Got like the valve cover leak in. Got a coolant leak at the thermostat housing, but runs and drives beautiful. So anyway, long and short of it is, I give 3,000 bucks for this Jeep. And honestly, for three grand, I don't know why anybody would ever buy a side-by-side -side when you could buy one of these. So we're pretty excited. Wiggles is just over the moon ecstatic. Um, 
I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. And actually it came with another bumper that already is set up with tow points on it. It was pulled behind an RV before. Oh, I mentioned that rust. There is rust here around the windshield, but it came with an entire new windshield assembly that's rust free. Story on this, by the way, is that it was brought to Michigan from California eight years ago. And then as far as I can tell, mostly just was a summer bomb around vehicle and saw little or no winter use since it came from California. So came with half doors, full doors, hard top. This is a friend of mine's soft top that he gave me. It's a bit ragged, but we're getting ready to clean it up. It's all covered in mud. We're going to clean that off, throw the soft top on it, and we're going to have some fun this summer. So anyways, that's what's happening in our family. So it's going to get set up and cruise along behind the Wander Lodge. But seriously, just... I mostly am sharing this because I'm so shocked at how crazy bone stock this thing all is. Just an unmolested original YJ. And we're probably just going to leave it stock. I looked at all the lift stuff and the crazy modifications and thought, you know what? We need a family vehicle to go run around. We'll be on pavement as much as we're off road, if not more, probably 75% pavement, 25% two track. We're just going to leave her bone stock and another 20 years. We'll probably have the last, last one in the world that hasn't been mauled. So anyways, there it is guys. Just, we we're pretty excited. Wanted to share with you, uh, the next step in this, uh, wander lodge, go explore the country adventure.